It's been a truly epic World Cup where the world's finest footballers have shown exactly why they are recognised as so on the international stage. But for all the amazing performances, there are some fantastic players who really didn't do themselves justice at the World Cup. So this is our World Cup Flops 11, looking at players from some of the tournament's best teams who didn't perform at all. In goal is David De Gea. The Spaniard's performance out in Russia was music to Jose Mourinho's ears, because there's no way Real Madrid will want to sign him after that. Ok, I mean he wasn't awful, but his tournament got off to the worst possible start when he fumbled in a Ronaldo shot that was straight at him. De Gea kept just one clean sheet at the World Cup, and that was only because VAR came to his rescue against Iran. The Man United stopper did have the chance to be Spain's hero in the round of 16, but was unable to do anything to stop the Russians advancing on penalties. Never mind Dave, you're still the best keeper in the Premier League at least. Except for Jordan Pickford of course. Right back is Joshua Kimmich. This was the defender's first World Cup appearance, but it was one to forget for Josh Kimmich, who did nothing to convince people that he is the heir to the Philip Lahm throne. The Bayern Munich man had, had a brilliant season in the Bundesliga, but couldn't translate his form to the international stage, getting his tournament off to an awful start with an abysmal showing against Mexico, where most of Germany's problems came from the space left in behind by Kimmich. Centre back is Jerome Boateng. It's a second German in this side, because the reigning champions really were that bad in Russia. When you look at the players Germany have available, they should have one of the strongest defences in the world, yet every opportunity they crumbled out in Russia. Jerome Boateng, who was normally somewhat dependable and a mainstay in the Germany defence for years, only managed a game and a half at the World Cup, being mauled by the Mexicans, then picking up a red card against Sweden, which actually worked in Germany's favour. A very bad tournament for the former Manchester City man. He certainly no Harry Maguire. He's alongside Gerard Piquet. So is Tiki Taka football officially dead? Considering Spain couldn't get past Russia, Bill is one of the worst Russian sides in recent memory, you'd have to think so, but they might have gotten a bit further if Gerard Piquet hadn't had a moment of madness in the last 16. If the Barcelona man hadn't given away that penalty, Russia probably wouldn't have gotten back into the game and never would have been able to take the game to penalties. Absolutely shocking from an experienced player like Piquet, who hadn't looked at his best during the group stages either. Then again, we could just have easily included Sergio Ramos in Piquet's place, but mainly just for his horrific hair. Left back is Rafael Guerrero. Right, is the Portugal left back actually any good, because I don't think I've ever seen him perform well. Despite being pacey up and down the flank, Rafa Guerrero is so suspect and lightweight at the back. While Ronaldo was doing all he could to drag Portugal through another tournament, Guerrero was doing the opposite, because I can only assume he had a holiday booked for the week of the quarterfinals. Often bullied out of possession and caught out in dangerous areas, Rafa Guerrero belongs in this flop 11. Holding midfield is Javier Mascherano. To be fair to Mascherano, the bloke is 34 years old and well past his best, but the past few months playing in China saw the Argentinian's footballing ability somewhat disappear completely. Slow and lethargic both in and out of possession, he looked like that old bloke you see playing pub football being ran rings around by kids half his age, then wiping out any given opportunity. On the right of midfield is Thomas Muller. At the start of the tournament, I'm sure a few of you would have backed Thomas Muller as an outsider for the Golden Boot, and I'm sure all of us were certain he'd score at least one goal at the World Cup. But no, the Bayern Munich man ended the tournament with a grand total of zero goals, which was part of the reason why they flopped so hard in Russia, they were just so toothless in attack. Considering four years ago this side had trounced Brazil 7-1 in a game which Thomas Muller was instrumental, it's amazing to think they couldn't even find the net against either Mexico or South Korea. On the left flank is Angel Di Maria. Another Argentinian who was somewhat past his best, when did this happen to Angel Di Maria? Or has he always been like this since that ill-fated spell at Old Trafford? Angel Di Maria used to be one of the best wingers in the world, but now he just seems to aimlessly run down dark alleys and get himself caught out. Don't be fooled by that screamer he scored against France, it was a bad tournament for Angel Di Maria, like it was for most of the Argentinians, who somehow almost snuck in at the quarterfinals despite failing to play well in any of their four games out in Russia. Attacking midfield is Mesut Ozil. Our fourth and final German in this team, Mesut Ozil also seemingly let his country down out in Russia, lacking any sort of intensity despite so often being the source of creativity for the four-time World Cup winners. His former manager Arsene Wenger wasn't impressed either, basically accusing him of playing with the handbrake on, playing safe rather than being the killer he knows he is, which is a bit of a weird thing to say about someone who I'm fairly certain has never killed a man in his life. I mean all Mesut Ozil does is set up goals and watch his relatives star in a bug's life. Up front is Robert Lewandowski. Christ Bayern Munich had a bad tournament because here's another flop from the Bavarian Giants. At least their players will be fresh considering most of them didn't even make it past the group stage. 
It was the first ever World Cup for Robert Lewandowski, and unfortunately the Polish striker won't have any lasting memories to tell the grandkids about in the future. You can hardly say him reliving the time they beat Japan in a game where everyone basically just gave up because Poland were already knocked out and Japan were going through, can you? Despite scoring more than 100 league goals for Bayern Munich since the last World Cup, Lewandowski managed a big fat zero in Russia, one of the key reasons why Poland failed so badly. And finally, he's alongside Gabriel Jesus. Before the tournament began, it looked like the World Cup was just going to be the next chapter in this incredible rise for Gabriel Jesus, as he prepared a lineup alongside superstars such as Neymar and Felipe Coutinho as part of one of the pre-tournament favourites. Instead though, Jesus struggled on the grand stage, never really showing why he was given the nod ahead of Roberto Firmino, who actually did manage to score a World Cup goal, while the closest the Man City ace got was a header that came crashing off the bar against Costa Rica. To be fair, we could have included Neymar on this World Cup flop 11 actually, not because he played badly, but because he was flopping in a different kind of way. So that's our stars who flopped at the World Cup 11, let us know yours in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.